Hey everyone, welcome to my panel at Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2018. Give yourselves a round of applause for being here today on a Sunday. This is my eighth PRG, my eighth purge. We're all purging. You guys watching that series? When I hear that series purge, I think PRG. It's my right to purge. It's my right to buy overpriced retro video game stuff. It's my right to play all the people I want. I want the other person in line to play just free and screw them. No. Be nice. It's free play. Come on. Be nice out there. I saw I saw that purge right there. You. Not letting that 10-year-old play. Anyway. So welcome. Um, is anyone here a first time panelist here? Okay, I apologize for this. I did. Now, is, is anyone here not familiar with me or what I do in my stuff? Because I got blind in the front row? No? Okay, okay, I'm Pat. That's it. Now, um, it's been a wondrous year moving into Castle Country, doing the podcast, well, two podcasts, 10th anniversary. It's the 10th anniversary of my YouTube channel and Pat Danny S. Punk. Thank you. There's something to be said for longevity, I guess. Um, you guys see that 10th anniversary video? Yes. All right. well, did you like it? Watch it again, it's not enough views. <laughs> Watch it right now on your phone, pop it up, and just let that, let that pre-roll ad play, it helps me out. No. Uh, it's also the 5th anniversary of the uh, CU podcast. You guys were at the panel yesterday with Plucky uh, Ian Ferguson. Let's see what else is going on. Uh, Flea Market Madness just came back. Wow, I should just have been, I had a conversation with, I think it was uh, Norm or someone else on Friday, that if I seriously just did Flea Market Madness like one a week for like five years, I probably would have been like one of those YouTubers, like five million subscribers. Just being like, oh, it's the Flea Market guy. He just does the Flea Market stuff all the time. And so I, was, I probably would have been like one of those YouTubers that would be like at VidCon and, you know, uh, getting in trouble for saying stuff I shouldn't be saying and then covered by a game voice. You know, that would have been me. Like, it's, it's, it's the flea market Pat guy. Like, don't I, would, I wouldn't be known as Pat, I'd be flea market madness guy. Like, that's what I would be. But I think that's what would have happened, because people discovered that they love this this moron walking around in the, in the sun buying stuff, you know, <laughs> for no reason at all. Um, yeah, when I first put that, I, I first shot the first one, I shot the first one for flea market madness. The same week I shot the first Pat Daniels one. It was like within the same few days of each other. I sat on, not literally sat on the footage for a year, that would have hurt, but I, I, I didn't do anything with the footage for a year, and then I edited it, uh, was that, like May or June of 2009, then put it up on game trailers, and then it got like 30,000 views on game trailers, and that's like a ton of views. If you adjust for like uh, viewer count inflation, that was a ton back in 2009. I was like, oh, there's something to this. So the 10th anniversary, that's next year. As I announced on the last podcast, though, it's going to be probably ending when I go through my current footage, so around, the, around number 50 is going to end with that. There's some Oz. I think, no, I'm like, no, that's the reason we like you, Pat. We don't, we don't even see your face in those videos. And, uh, you know, but Frank will be around for those, and, you know, there's other stuff going on. There's, there'll be, a, you know, another Pat the Punk video this year, probably. There might be a Kickstarter for a certain... Not Frank, not for a certain Frank, that'd be weird. <laughs> well, that's the PAL version, no, you're not gonna get that probably. For a certain SNES guidebook. So that's uh, gonna come out next year. Yeah, look at that. Score one for nice art and marketing. Um, so this is gonna be similar quality, hopefully. Well, physically it's gonna be like the same book, It'll probably a little bit bigger than the NES book in terms of like number of, number of pages, not you know, it's not going to be like a 20-inch by 40-inch book. You know, it's not going to be like a weapon. Well, actually, the current one's a weapon. Anyway. But it's going to cover, it's going to be the same exact type of book. Uh, there's more writers uh, added to the team. One writer here, Karen's up front. Give, give a hand to Karen. She's writing about 32 of these, something like that? 32? 31? Something like that. Um, maybe there's those Get them done. <laughs> What are you usually writing right now? <laughs> um, and then, so it's going to be uh, better, better quality writing because I'm not uh, doing the majority of it like the with the NES book. I'm doing like 10% of the reviews. So I'm not a big Super Nintendo expert anyway, so it makes sense. Bring other people that know the RPGs, that know the sports games, you know, things like that. Any other writers here in the room? Is Daniel in the room today or do you leave? Daniel's not here. Okay. 
just one writer. So uh, there's going to be that. Uh, that's like the North American cover. There's going to be the PAL one, which right now only about like five percent of people are pre-ordering. That's like the wraparound cover. Uh, I should just cut that off there. There's the PAL one, and then where's the special one? Is that here? Uh, the special cover? No, it's not. So the special cover is going to be like a pre-order exclusive only. Um, that's Frank again. Uh, so, so that'll be like a laminated sort of thing that, you know, if you guys want to do it, there's no, no pressure. Throw a few more bucks pass away, you get the special edition cover. But, uh, but there's no obligation, obviously. And it's going to retail the Super Nintendo book. I'm trying to keep it at $60, just like the NES book. I know how you retro collectors are. Can't raise the price or even adjust for inflation if you come through the pitchforks and the torches. So, so it's been uh, it's been fun working on this book because, unlike the NES library, which I'm at least aware of all the games and I'm familiar with most of them, on the Super Nintendo library, there's still games I'm looking at people that are turning their views. I'm like, whoa, that's a game. That's interesting. Fireman was a game in the UK. I was like, well, that's interesting. So I'll be discovering some of these games as well for the first time. So that's gonna be fun. After this book, I might think about doing. You know, a uh, guide to the Game Boy library. I'm not sure if that would be of interest to people. Just because, oh, I don't want to do that. No, no I have to. Just because the Game Boy library is, there's not a lot of nostalgia for the Game Boy versus the Super Nintendo. I think people don't want to play a lot of black and green games <laughs> in modern day. What's that? He would probably buy it. Yeah, I think Jeremy's done what? He's done a book or two for like 89. I think yeah. he's doing it year by year. Yeah, I don't have that sort of time. Just one book, all the games. Um, but if I do Game Boy, then I probably got to do Game Boy Color with it, but wouldn't I? Since there's a lot of overlap, it wouldn't make sense to separate, separate them out. Then I look at a gigantic book. So there's like, what, a thousand games, not counting the Japanese ones, I think, for, uh... Let me finish this book first. Let me get one out of the way. I never said you the Super Nintendo book for the, for the NES one, so I don't think about it, so, okay. I'll do that, then who knows, after that, I'll do the, you know, Ultimate Nintendo Guide to the Virtual Boy Library pamphlet, fold out the pamphlet, <laughs> I'll do that. Or, oh, there is, there is a Game & Watch book already, someone already took that one. Well, there is an N64 one that I might have to do at some point again. But definitely, I think Game Boy would be the next one up. Does that make the most sense to Game Boy for anything else? Yeah. yeah. Not, not, you know, not guides to Pong consoles in the 70s. <laughs> Ultimate Pong. Ultimate table tennis, electronic tennis. That the, that's the is that the generic term for the you know bad thing for drawing jelly. Pong is to like electronic tennis. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, this is how I think. I'm crazy. So anyway, that's what's going on in my life. Besides the uh, you know the uh, the ninth annual NES charity marathon will come back at some point, just not this year. Maybe first quarter next year. I got I got to finish up book stuff. Kickstarter for the book. We're looking at hopefully next month launching. If not, you can still pre-order on at ultimate NES or ultimate SNES.com. Goes to my web store, you can pre-order it there too. So either way, you get your name in the back of the book. So Pat can leave the lights on in Castle Country. So. <laughs> and there's other things going on too. Uh, the, the, not, there, did you guys hear about that Not For Resale documentary thing? There was a panel yesterday, I think I was there. Um, so that, I'm executive producing that, and also creative consulting that. And uh, there was supposed to be a couple of clips Kevin, the director, was supposed to have given to me. I don't have it, but I have another clip, a rough clip of something, and I'll show that now. And then uh, this is going to come out next year. So by Portland this year, this should be showing, but it should be up for us. It's going to be in the convention, hopefully the convention circuit, should be the film, film festival circuit next year, and then we're going to see what's up here. So this is this talks about uh, sort of the physical versus digital, I guess the change threat clip. I didn't name it that, but well, here it is. I think when you buy digital, there's always, at least for me, a little bit of hesitation. I'm like, okay, well, if I buy this now and I delete it, am I gonna, am I gonna get it back? Am I gonna be able to download it again? Is that license still gonna be mine? And I think now, obviously, because it's been around for a while, most of those fears are gone. There's a lot less flexibility with digital media because it's, it's attached to either the, the physical system itself or your your account. Very often, people, when trading in their games, will, you know, say enthusiastically that it's like, oh, I have this game, this game, on the system, and 
that doesn't really add tangible value to the thing. Those digital downloads are tied to some account. It's not a, a licensing that's transferable. It's not an artifact that can be passed from one hand to the other. Yes, you have those things, but now no one else can. Downloading has no value. They bring in systems that are like, I have 50 games on this, how much are you going to give me? Nothing. I'm going to give you the same price as if you had nothing on it. Man, remember when video games required a manual? Remember when you couldn't finish that cartridge-based game unless you had the manual because there was a certain bit of information that was only in the manual? Yeah. That's, that's something that I think is not happening so much yeah. in video games these days. Or the ingenuity involved or the creativeness, the creativity, excuse me, involved in, in developing a game or creating a certain special situation in a game that requires you to think outside of the game itself. Uh, it's sort of waning a little bit. That's, that's not happening as much. They have like the remake of MGS1 for the GameCube, um, the Twin Snakes, which is made by uh, Silicon Knights, I believe, which was is on, was an Ontario studio in St. Catharines, which is kind of cool. In the game, at one point you're asked to call this character, and Snake asks, like, how do I know a number? And the colonel like breaks the, the fourth wall by telling you to look at the back of the case. There's a code uh, that you need to input late game that is only on the back of the box or inside the manual. I, I try really hard not to be, you know, an old person who thinks that something was better in the old days. But the one concession I give myself is that with infinite choice, I don't think that young people are being forced to expose themselves to media that they maybe want, maybe isn't their first choice. When I was growing up, you know, I didn't have cable TV. We had like five channels, and I might watch a weird movie or some bad TV show that wasn't necessarily my first choice, but I would get something out of it or I would discover, you know, things through being forced to be exposed to something that was older or weirder. I think that you become a more well-rounded, interesting, creative person if you're exposed to media that isn't uh, pushed onto you necessarily by people with corporate interests. It used to be like a one gigabyte download was an incredible, incredible amount of time and effort and you could probably pop down to the Best Buy and buy the game before you could finish downloading at home. So I think, you know, broadband accessibility and, and um, adoption was a major, major driver of that. I have a lot of problems with uh, whenever I buy a new game, it always has to update the software and it's just like an hour uh, to wait for that. And uh, the, the, the most recent thing I played was Zelda Breath of the Wild. It starts up, there's a blue bar, says like software update. The blue bar finishes, then it starts again. And that is blue bar number two. And then after that, it does it again. There's three, three blue bars of, of software updates that I had to wait through. I, I do miss just putting in a game and then it just, it just starts, like that's it. We still have developing nations where Internet connections might be iffy or not even nationwide. I can go download a game that's one gigabyte pretty quickly. If I'm living somewhere where you don't have a good internet connection, pretty impossible to do that. What about the military? If you're in a forward operating base in Afghanistan. Internet might not be the best to get a new game. There's parts of the US in the sticks that don't have the best internet. You might be pro digital distribution living in Silicon Valley, maybe not somewhere in West Virginia. I have a lot of people that still don't have internet. They live in an area that just can't get high-speed internet. It's, it's not fast enough, it cuts out. I live in a valley and there's no signal. Even places that you would think have high-speed internet do not. I, the road I live on, I, I take this issue kind of personally because I can't get high-speed internet where I live. My house is on a double yellow line. And so it's not like I'm on a gravel road or a single lane, little dirt road out in the country, you know. Um, I've had so many people say that they don't have internet that they, and that they need to update their console and things like that, that I actually have a TV set up here. I had this extra space here, I had an extra TV, and I was like, let's put this up here for people that need to update their console. Uh, if they don't have access to high-speed internet, they can update download their DLC. Some people will bring their Xbox in, set it up, start the update to hand me the controller behind the counter, hey I'll be back and go to Walmart. I honestly still get a lot of customers that don't have solid internet at home. So even selling an Xbox One console for instance, you actually need the internet initially to set up the system at all. 
So we'll actually do a lot of setups here in the store for the customer so they can get their system ready to play whenever they get home instead of being frustrated that they can't set it up at all because they don't have you know, a good internet connection. People will call me and they're like, is the TV open so I can update? And uh, yeah, yeah, it's open, come on down. This, this has gotten a lot of use in that aspect. Probably to be renamed, not the resale documentary. We're not sold in the name there. But it, that's just a mesh of a few different things there. That's been, this is very rough. And it's still, but it just shows you some of the pros and cons of you know, digital distribution. The CEO of Psyonix was there. Those are the, the team that do Rocket League. Without digital gaming, there would be no Rocket League. There would be no Minecraft, for example. So there is, the documentaries are just about, whoa, digital games are all bad. No, the, Digital games is just the, the next evolution forward, but how does that affect you know, physical media, and preservation of, of old games? How is it going to be affecting those mom and pop shops, uh, retail shops that you see there, uh, for not retail, uh, retro game shops? Uh, you know, there's some here selling here. Like, how does this affect you know, 10 years down the line, 15 years? How are they going to be affected by the fact that now we're growing up in an age when you know, the children here aren't going to they don't know or care about physical media anymore. Everything's streaming or everything is just digital. So that's gonna create something, a challenge for some of these smaller shops in the future. GameStop's already seeing that. And they're gonna focus on retro stuff. They're just focusing on the, focusing on the current games and, with, and digital's killing them. They're closing up more and more stores every year. And I, I'm on a record saying there won't be GameStop in like 10 years from now. It'll be like how Radio Shack's going out of business, you know, here and there, I like Radio Shack though. So that's depressing. Anyway, uh, so, so yeah, that's what's going on in, in Pat's life here, besides you know, visiting you all here, beautiful Portland. So if there's any questions, we can, we can talk about you know, any upcoming projects or future books and other stuff I can't, can't really talk about right now. That's in the works for next year. Next year's going to be strange. Um, or yeah, any questions at all? Uh, yes, sir. Um, uh, Anyone else I want to mention? Uh, Ashton, who worked on the first books for Attorney. Karen, who I mentioned. Uh, Peter Sterrett, who does some writing for RetroWare TV. Uh, Daniel Greenberg, who actually had a panel here. Uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, he had a panel here yesterday. Uh, I think he's had a panel in the past, too. He's had panels at Magnus. He's an academic. He's a great guy. Uh, who else is in the book? Uh, Jim Evans worked on the first book. He did a lot of reviews. He's in the UK. Uh, I should know everyone off the top of my head. 8-Bit Alley is doing some reviews. You know 8-Bit Alley? The Aussie. Uh, she's doing some reviews. Uh, Dagan Moriarty is doing reviews. Um, and I, oh my god, I'm missing out one or two other people. Uh, another Daniel, who you don't know. Uh, yeah, and, and no Ian, though. Ian decided he didn't want to do any writing. So give them all the grief in the world at the, at the, at the booth. Yeah, it's like, Ian, you let us down. How dare you, Ian? So, oh yeah, I'm writing too. <laughs> that was it, that's the only question. <laughs> uh, yes? Are you gonna be uh, streaming on Twitch on a regular basis? Oh man, that's the question. I just did the, uh, I've been doing like the, the Twitch premiere stuff. I did that a couple times. I don't know if you see that, I, I premiered the, uh, Hit the anniversary podcast on that, and I did another video, I think, on that. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I want to, I'm also fearful of Twitch. There's something that's kind of fury, like I'm like, and this is something someone has done 24 hour streams before where I'm like falling asleep and out of my mind. I, I think I will do that, I just have to like give, okay, I'll pick like one day a week where I know I'll be playing like Super Nintendo games, I sell the review, and, and I'll be doing that. So that's twitch.tv slash country code. So you can check out. Actually, the last marathon, I didn't freaking highlight the thing. So I got to re upload it in Premiere. That I'm definitely going to do. The, all the past marathons will be a premiere on Twitch so everyone can watch them at the same time. So that's literally, that is literally eight days of content I will be uploading by one a week and be like, oh, I thought, if I if I did the lead up to the next marathon, I'll probably do that. Like, here's marathon number one. Here's two, here's three, here's four. Hopefully I didn't say anything that would be construed as really bad in this day and age eight years ago. Probably did while I was half asleep. So that's gonna be fun getting kicked off Twitch. <laughs> Wanna do that? 
yelling at me and me and he yelling at each other. We did that. Yes, sir. How big is Castle Country? How big is Castle Country? Uh, are you looking for a roof to rent, sir? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> um, big enough to hold my collection, but also big enough where I realize I have to let something go that is filling up. It's, it's, it's a few bedrooms. It's a few bedrooms. You, you like the studio space I have there? Yeah. It's a studio space uh, slash uh, game room. So I have also another kind of mini room if I get a couple pinball machines and a couple arcade machines. So, you know. They're out. They don't like the fact that my house isn't huge enough. <laughs> it's a nice house. Thank you, sir. Made possible uh, by serving a Skybook. Anyway. Yes, sir. Uh, any update on the video game years? <sighs> update on the video game years. Man, I left that out of my prologue, my preamble. <laughs> uh, video game years is not... I'm not <laughs> slamming the coffin the cover on that bit. Um, I can only, I have to think about that after I get through this book coming out. Because without this, there is no Castle Country, I've got to pay the mortgage. After that, I'll probably then go back to John Lance from Redford and like, okay, should we do the Kickstarter? I mean, if we, we, we know if we do a Kickstarter, we know what the goal would have to be to make it feasible. To actually pay the writers properly, writers, editors properly, the on-air talent, the producers, everything. The voiceover guy got paid nothing, for example, or next to nothing. So, I'm not sure if it would raise the cash to do it, to be honest. It could, if there's enough, you know, it could, but... So that would probably, if that is going to kickstart, it would have to kickstart, it would probably be like, God, uh, it have to be at least summer next year, like, just, just no time. John Lance has wanted me to do it for the past two years. And, but they don't do anything else. They, when they have their job and family, they, they have lives. I'm not saying that. But they don't do this stuff. Like they, they're, they, they, for them, it's like a side hobby. For me, this is business. So I didn't make money working on a video game here, so I can't do it for free. You know, especially when I have this stuff going on. So it's prioritizing. It's like pushing back you know, a Marvel movie for a couple more years. I'm not sure that's a good comparison. <laughs> yes, on the end here. Rise, young lad. <laughs> um, if you could build a video game, what would it be like? If I could do my own video game, what would it be? Man, I haven't thought about that. Actually, I have. I actually have an idea. Ooh, I forgot about that. I probably will be de developing some sort of game next year. Maybe, maybe, maybe not, maybe. Can't give it away, young lad. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't, but I have an idea in my head. It's based upon a game, an arcade game, that there hasn't really been any spiritual sequels to that involves cannons, that's all I'll say. Yes, sir? Can you give us an update on uh, Frank? <laughs> update on Frank? Let's see, what's the update on Frank here? <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I called Frank here a couple times, uh, live, but I'm not going to put them on him. Uh, Frank's doing okay. He's getting a little older, a little more set in his ways. He's nearing 70 now. We finished up the ass Franks. He still goes to the swap movie every now and then. He still barbecues a, you know, a mean uh, steak every now and then. He's doing okay. He's still probably smoking too much. He's indulging a little too much, but you know, he's earned it. He's doing my landscaping. We've only argued once so far about it. It's been great. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, first I want to say I'm a big fan of the uh, first NES book and the app. And oh, thank was, you. And I was just wondering if there's going to be an app to go along with the new book. Yes, there will be. So, good news about the app. It's finally getting updated. Because nice. 1.4 was supposed to be out a year and a half ago. <laughs> so I have a new developer. Yay! Cerulean Games is helping out. They've actually put out an iOS bug fix the past few days. The search function got out of whack, they fixed that. So we're gonna overhaul it with 1.4. Like, I mean, all new engine, like all brand spanking new. We're gonna finally update in all the um, like cover variants I wanted in originally, uh, all the PAL name variants, so you'd be able to say, oh, it's Ninja Gaiden or Shadow Warriors. Like, you'd be able to see that stuff in the app. The Hong Kong and Asian carts, for example, will be in there. It'll have everything in there except like the Sashing games will not be in there still. I think eventually that'll be like a 
four or five where Liesl did. No one has to Satchin games or cares. I didn't see one, I think I saw one Satchin game in the whole convention. Anyway, Frank Zafali will kill me if I say that. Anyway, this is you know, you import those. Anyway, so, um, and then we'll have the ability to export your collection, things like that. Like, it'll, it's gonna get to where I wanted it to be way back. And then, yeah, and that'll be the basis after the superintendent version, which I'm hoping to launch when the book launched at the same time. It's called ups upsell. You know, yeah, upsell yeah. that. <sighs> yeah, new developers, great. <laughs> I actually get paid for my app now. What? <laughs> yes, sir, with the pat hair. <laughs> That's a compliment. <laughs> Can I draw Frank in any art software, like in Photoshop or MS Paint or LGN Video Art? <laughs> should I do that? As, should that be on Twitch? I have I have an LGN Video Art somewhere. Somewhere I packed it up and moved with it. I don't know why. Did anyone see a video art out there? Was that not technically a video game? It's video art. Um, no, I can't draw Frank. I, I'm not a good artist. I'm not. It's bad. Uh, Billy from the Game Changers actually did that Frank movie. They asked Frank Image of the Game Changers with that. Would you want to draw Frank? No. Don't want to. Why are you asking me that? Because I thought you would have at least a little bit of artistic skills. He's the new version of that guy that used to harass me every year. Is he here? He's a new one. <laughs> he passed on the curse. You guys know what I'm talking about. Every year, you used to be 12, now the kid's in college. Yeah. Can't escape it, only in Portland. Yeah. Are you 11 or 12? 12. Son of a bitch. Pat's harasser is the next generation. It's time to retire. Yes. See a hand there. Documentary called here. Documentary is called Not for Resale right now. It's going to change because no one's in love with that title. It plays on the fact that you cannot sell digital games. Really. They're not for resale. You can't sell them in a game shop. You can't sell them at the Purge here. The Purge. It's the Purge. Yes. Would you ever consider doing NES Punk? I know you said before it doesn't get enough views. Would you do it as a loss leader because maybe it brings a new audience? It is a loss leader. Um, so a loss leader in terms of well, you know, consumerism means you do something that you know you take a loss on in order to get attention or to get people through the door. It's like, when, this is how I learned the term. Like supermarkets, when they have a sale item on like, oh, a can of peas for 50 cents. So it gets you in the door to buy their gallon of milk, which is $4, which you make a ton of profit on. That's a loss leader. So the, the, the gambit is I spend 50 hours on an NES Punk video that gets 35,000 views in order to get them to watch everything else. The problem is that there's no connection between the NES Punk series with anything else I can do. The issue with my channel has always been that it's not a singular flea market management channel, which would have done gangbusters. Uh, channels do the best usually when they're like singularly focused. We have this one show. I have a bunch of different shows throughout the year which probably hurt me more. Not lying, this is the reality of how, how YouTube works. So you have NES Punk, you have a podcast show with segments, you have Fleet Mark Madness, you have Ask Frank, you have Video Game Years clips that she's put on. That's not good for the algorithm and the engine to do that. And plus the NES Punk stuff I think is not, not that it's old hat, but it's, um, not, it's, it's hard to keep a show going for that long and have people still be interested in, in it because times change. You know, James is still going strong with his videos, but he's, he's a, an exception to that rule. I mean, James' videos just get millions each. They still do very well. But his audience has even grown up and probably moved on a little bit, but he can still do it and get the views. I can't. I have 5% of James's audience. So it's tougher. Doesn't mean I'm giving them up. I just can't do them every month. Unless, you know, someone wants to, you know, get a sugar daddy to do Pat and Punk videos. Is that my sugar daddy calling me? No. Punk daddy? That's, that's, that's creepy. I'm sorry. There's children here. There's 12 year olds here with Pat hair. The future Pat. <laughs> Uh, any questions? And we'll do the Play the Punk Challenge that I'm semi known for. Yes? Uh, you mentioned that you know less about the Super Nintendo games than Nintendo games. Yes. And I assume, like myself, you transitioned off to the Super Nintendo after the Nintendo. Is it that 
at that point in your life you were kind of less into games than you were into Nintendo, or is it more that you spent so much time over the last 20 years focusing on the NES that you just don't have the knowledge or, or So I moved on to the Super Nintendo after the NES. Um, I was also getting more and more heavily into, into PC gaming as a preteen. I grew up with computers when I was five, so I always was computer gaming alongside NES. But now all of a sudden, in the NES era, computer games were not, did not look as good. You didn't have platformers. You didn't have Legend of Zelda on computers. By the early 90s, things changed. All of a sudden, PC gaming became powerful with the technology, VGA uh, you know, cards and, and sound blaster cards and CD-ROM technology. All of a sudden, Super Nintendo games, you couldn't do that. You couldn't do PC stuff on Super Nintendo. So there were two different audiences. So it's like, oh, OK. I could play, yeah, I could play Super Mario World, and I loved it. But Star Fox was not nearly as good as a game as like X-Wing CD or TIE Fighter on the PC. It's like night and day, you know, playing those sort of games. It's the stuff you couldn't do. So I transitioned to PC and playing like Sierra games, and playing LucasArts games. That was just more my style. So I, I only owned about six or seven Super Nintendo games. I didn't, I rented some, but it was more the transition into being a teenager, being more adult, I guess, and then, you know, going into the PC stuff is really what, what happened with that. And then N64 was trash, and never got it. <laughs> Sorry, it's true. <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> Any other questions? One more. Any more collaborations with those lovable game chasers? Um, like the cartoons? Not, not that I know of. I hear there might be something murmuring with, uh, with them doing something. Well, it's not murmuring. They said about it. They're doing a movie. So it's not even secrets on Twitter. So I don't know if I write me in as the villain. I don't know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, those guys. All right, it's time for the Play the Punk Challenge. We've got 10 minutes. We're going to try to end the punk. going to purge here together. <laughs> One more, one more. Hello? <laughs> Alright, who wants to do the play the fun challenge? Who has not asked a question yet? We'll start with that. <laughs> you, sir. Yes, on your legs. <laughs> you in the end. Okay, this is good. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Is this yeah. too low? Can you hear me? Can I hear me? Okay, time to play. I feel like I'm yelling at this. So this, so let's, uh, what's your names? Andrew. Andrew and Matt. Andrew and Matt, give it up for Andrew and Matt. <laughs> Andrew and Matt, you're going to do, let's see. How about Ghosts and Goblins? <laughs> Andrew's player one. So we'll just say like the most points before you die, or the fastest you can do the first level if you don't die. I'll time it. So if you die, it'll be a new score. But you can't just, you know, farm for creatures and put your guys in this. So I should have thought of this better. <laughs> Alright. Is that uh, Andrew? Okay, Andrew's going on. He's just goes to gobbling. Gobbling? They existed. I know if anyone was good at this game. All right, but it's just trouble. <laughs> so we get to the uh, Demon's Press guy in second here. Oh yeah, he knows how to play. He's easy. Oh, okay. All right, all right, expert. I'm glad you had that one. All right, let's see if you can make the jump here. Look at that jump. Look at this little red box over here. Sponsored by Mac Weldon. <laughs> Use code CU Podcast to save 10% on your order. I'm from Matt Weldon. Um, Alright. I'm going to watch out for those sh shield carriers. I don't know the name of these guys. I don't notice how, how skinny his arms were before. Alright, look at him. Alright, 
got an awkward curve on his right arm there. Uh, also <laughs> oh, okay, so 7900. I think there's one minute left in the clock there. Alright, so this is Matt, right? Alright, Matt. Throw up the ringer. If I heard a sigh before it started, so I guess I've never played this before. Now, have you played this before? Uh, maybe once. Okay, that's a no. I don't need to get a bunch. Oh, alright. No one's trying to get the knife in around. It's key. Some forward progress here. Play on some cash, that's good for points. Go back for more. He's taking the bottom right. Uh oh! He's in his skinnies. Alright. Sponsored again by Matt Wilder. Oh, you got the knife. That's a key. Oh! I think Andrew wins that one, man. Thanks, guys. You will, you will both get a prize, though. And you can get a digital download code, code for a certain NES guy. Alright, Andrew. Good for Andrew. Matt! Matt, what did you get? You get. It's WrestleMania. <laughs> Good luck figuring out how to throw a body sign in that game. Alright, who's next? Yeah, we got time for like two more games here. Okay. Who here do I actually think is a good, nice person? Hands up. Hands up. No, they don't! I don't get one here. You, sir. Nice one. Actually, both of you. How about both of you? Yeah, why not? What's your name? Bill versus Sean. Yeah, give it up for Bill and Sean here. Bill and Sean. Okay, we're gonna do something fun here. You guys know how to add? <laughs> Have fun, guys. Sean. Bill's on the left, Sean's on the right. We have sort of pinkish. Oh, Sean's ready to drink. So you have to, you have to add, subtract. Multiply or somehow divide to get to 25. Bill is at four times something. Four times, uh, oh, it went to 36. And I was adding, uh oh. I was going to say two out of three, so I'm the first to get there. We'll see. <laughs> Bill's got 36. You want to probably get a, 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 a subtraction. There you go. Sean's going to try to divide somehow. This will be fun. They're up 37 divided by six. If you divide by one, you end up in the same place you were before. <laughs> They're both puzzled by, by, these, by these, uh, these, these symbols in the bottom. They're foreign to them. What is that? Is that a T? Negative three? Alright, that's it. That's all I can take. I don't know who won that. Bill won that? Okay, we got there. Alright, Bill, you win a digital download code. Sean, well, we don't have this in your forte. So we'll do Wheel of Fortune Junior Edition. <laughs> got time for one or two more here. We'll do two more. Nor went long. You on the end since you've been to all the three panels? Yes, you. Left. All three panels have been here. So why not? Uh, don't hold up an action figure, that's kind of getting shot. You on the end. Yeah, come on up. What's your name? Narai versus. versus. Yeah, three minutes. <laughs> yes. Narai versus us. Give it up for them. Okay. We have time for two more or one more. Two more, all right. Give it up for our AV assistants here today. Okay, we're gonna do, uh, God. Don't pick, Narai says don't pick something shitty, wow. Okay. We'll do Dr. Mario. Let's do it just quick. Two out of three, where the first one go, whatever. All right, the rise on the left, uh, Sean, uh, Dustin, Dustin, Dustin's on the right. Okay. How do you play Dr. Mario? Let you ask. Well, if you match the colors to eliminate the viruses, you need uh, four in a row, and they get wiped out. Right there. 
So right now, it looks like uh, they both know how to play, which is good, but sometimes they play a fun challenge, no one knows how to wake up tomorrow. I'm going to on the spot. Just good. Uh, looks like Dustin is... Well, Dustin almost won right there. And round one went to one two, uh, Dustin. All right, let's go. All right. Her eyes got some determination in her eyes. And she just... Uh, is this a shitty game, her eye? <laughs> Like uh, Dustin is uh, doing okay. Oh! oh. Wow. All right, all right. I got some faith that you can win around here. Okay. Dustin, you got one more. You take you take the prize here. Okay. Some stronger start for her eye there. D Dustin's a machine though so yeah. far here. Wow. Okay. Oh, it's two versus one here on the virus's left. And is that it? Oh, wow. Good job, Dustin. Dustin, Dustin, my, my man. Dustin, you want a digital download book, though. You're right, we're playing a shitty game. <laughs> you win. Let's see. Should I be nice to Narai or? Nice. Give, give it up to me. Give it up. Little Samson. Someone said be mean. That will run. <laughs> I will give you. Wow. I'll give you, you know, I'll give you a, a really fit copy of this right? You have five of these? I tried being nice. With the record, you all saw that. Oh, okay. oh did you think that's him? Hey, no, no, not him. No, 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 wait a second. Wait a second. I won one minute, right? That was an unauthorized giveaway. For my future nemesis. Only in Portland. <laughs> One more tomorrow play the punk challenge here. Alright, watch out. One more. Who hasn't asked a question yet? I want to be very here. Don't press your luck, sir. Okay? I'm still busy here. You want that in the iron way anyway. You're right here. Come on up. Alright. Man, hostile crowd is getting hostile all day like this? Just for me. Thank you. What's your name? Alex. Alex versus Jason. Good up for Alex and Jason. We all know how this ends. We all know how this ends. By the aqueduct, battling out, as our ancestors always wanted. So it was Alex and Jason. Alex and Jason. Have fun, guys! <laughs> Alex versus Jason, this is the world famous of Bubble Death and Nash Towns. Alex is on the left, and blue Jason is in purple. I would prefer purple. Alex uh, just got kicked by Jason. Jason's using the, the big boot. Oh! Clock combo by Alex. You should not want that in real life. Alright. Okay. Oh, nice boot to the butt for Jason. They don't have to go in for any strategy, they're just, they're just going for it. You know there's running attacks too, you can get me a little cheap and do my infinite combo. Oh, he's trying it. Oh, nice move by Jason there. Oh, running head, but there's also a running punch. Another one! Wow. Jason is just turning out of the, the bubble of the heat. Not done yet. Oh god, come on. Come on, Alex. You got it. Come on, Alex. 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 I, I can tell Alex. <laughs> and Alex, you win. You know what? I'll be nicer to Alex. We'll be, uh, you know what? Uh, you get to choose from this. How about you got Chess Master, you got Bayou Millie, or you got Top Gun 2? Which one do you want? You'll take by you, Billy. Get an ADS, sir. Get an ADS. All right, everyone. Thanks for coming out to this strangely weird panel. I'll be back at the booth. My booth is by the console area. Enjoy the rest of your purge here, everyone.